Thank you very much to Ed and to uh, Ed Decker. They are <laughs> Tonight's uh, panel um, is part of the Horizons Foundation Q uh, series. This panel is um, uh, queer uh, arts, uh, resistance, and healing. Our stories, I should say, resistance and healing. Um, I made a few notes because I wanted to just also share a little bit more context for the conversation before I introduce our distinguished panel here. Um, as we've just sort of said together in the room, um, our, our art has always told a deep narrative of our communities. Um, throughout modern history, it has told intricate tales of our struggles, our resistance, and our healing. 
Um, I dug out this um, booklet that I used to use many years ago um, that was produced by the Center for Artistic Activism. It was the handbook that we used. Um, and it notes that arts and activism do uh, slightly different work in the world. Um, activism, um, according to the handbook, um, is the activity of challenging and changing power relationships. While there are many ways of doing active activism, the column ele common element is targeted toward a discernible end. Art, on the other hand, tends to often not always have such a clear target. Its goal is to stimulate uh, feeling, to move us emotionally, or alter our perceptions. Um, activism, in this sense, um, um, activism moves the material world while art moves the heart, the body, and the soul. We all know that social change just doesn't happen. It happens because people, like all of us, decide to make change. People don't just decide to change their mind and act accordingly. They are personally moved to do so by emotionally powerful stimuli. Um, so I wanted to share that from the handbook um, before I turn to our guest here and introduce um, our panelists. Um, India Davis of the Topsy Turvy Queer Circle. <laughs> Shana Barago of the Transgender Film Festival. 